So, anyway, yeah, there's different types of selection. We're going to look at the different types of natural selection. Although, like Ariel was studying, you can look at sexual selection and other types of selection in with it, and they can fall into these same categories. But to keep things simple, for the scope of this class, we'll focus on natural selection. So, a little quick recap, a little bit more about natural selection. That's survival of the fittest. What does that mean, though? So now would be your chance to get on YouTube. Lauren's hungry. The most Yeah, the ones most adapted to the environment, better to survive, which means they're better to reproduce. That was Darwin's idea. See, look at that. And we call those the ones who are most adapted, having the most adaptations. So that's the word for those traits that give you an advantage in that environment. Specific terms, adaptation. Gives that connotation that's been modified by natural selection over time to better fit the environment. And it's all about allele frequencies. So what are allele frequencies again? Two-point answer, Parker. I have a one-point answer. All right, let me have it. How often an allele shows up in the population? Yeah, that's the one point. Compared to the total. There's the second one, compared to the total. So what's going to happen to the allele frequencies for beneficial traits? The beneficial traits will show up more often than like the non-beneficial traits. Probably. Yeah, so the beneficial traits, the allele frequency is going to increase. Tyler, what about those detrimental alleles? And I'm going to do those for those traits. Detrimental means bad. They will decrease. All right, they're going to decrease. Bryce, here's the hard one. What about the traits that don't really matter? Probably going to stay the same. Yeah, they stay about the same. Now, you could lose some or gain some here or there. That's part of that genetic drift. But for the most part, if we just look at natural selection, the allele frequencies for traits that don't affect fitness aren't going to matter, so they're going to stay the same. Unless it's linked to a beneficial or detrimental trait which is kind of fun, you the geneticists are always interested in looking at linkage and stuff like that, but whatever. Remember, natural selection can only act on pre-existing traits. It can't just poof a new trait out of nowhere, so we're only able to look at traits that are already in our population. So the question is which traits are the good ones? And based on which traits are good or better or gooder, how I like to say, we found three main patterns of selection. There's directional selection, what's called disruptive selection, and there is stabilizing selection. These are the three types, and if you're writing these words, well, there they went. But don't worry, because we'll come back to them, because you need some space to draw some pretty graphs. Now, it's all based on this idea. What's this thing called? Bell curve. Bell curve, very good. Why? Because it looks like a bell. Because it looks like a bell. You could pick it up and ring it like a bell, except it's a graph, not a bell. Sometimes also called a normal curve or a standard curve. What's this point right here? If on the Y they're doing like number of like people. And then down here, this would be an example of like IQ. IQ, they standardize 100 is average. And you could be lower or you could be higher. This is also what your test grades would look like if I graded on a curve, but I don't because that's way too much math. What's that, what's that point at the top called? There's a word for that. Think math class. It's the mode. It's the mode. So right here, if it's a perfect bell curve, then the mode is exactly in the middle. It's also the median. It's also the mean. A lot of times, you do a lot of math to adjust it so that happens. So this is your standard bell curve, and it's under the assumption that most populations look this way, right? Average is what most people have, because that's why we call it average. If it wasn't average, we wouldn't call it average. For example, I'm a little bit taller than average height. Average height for a man is around 5'10", 5'11". That's average because most men are that height. You got shacks like up here, you got some people that are down here, but right, it's all about who what most people have. And that's the mode, that's the average. So if you look at directional selection, you could write this as happening where the mode shifts in one direction. See the dotted line is representing the original population for whatever trade it was. And then after selection happens, when Ariel goes back the next season and collects more lizards, you can see now most lizards are here, and fewer are here, fewer are there. Could shift this direction, could shift that direction, that's directional selection. Natural selection is selected for whatever this trait was. A little bit more whatever than average. Human height's a good example of directional selection, because people over the generations have been getting taller. Right? This used to be the average height. Average height for a man used to be like 5'4". That's not even tall for a girl anymore. Now it's up here. Does that make sense? That's directional selection. 
to make sure you have directional selection, I would highly recommend sketching a little graph, right? Doing sort of like this one. Disruptive selection literally looks like the graph has been disrupted. It's also sometimes known as diversifying selection. So whatever the medium, whatever average was in this situation, that turned out to be crappy, and they died. But the two extremes became more important, and so they, they increased. We're still going with height. The medium height ones were crappy, and it was either really good to be really tall or really short. Is that very uncommon? In humans, probably. This, it all depends on the environment. Remember, the environment dictates what traits are good. What traits fit that environment, those are the ones that will be selected for. So the alleles for being tall and the alleles for being short will increase, but the alleles for being medium will decrease. So that's disruptive selection, a.k.a. diversifying selection. Here's what Ariel was talking about with female lizards. She said that their you know, female lizard body size was under stabilizing selection. Here is the original population. Basically, the mode just becomes even more of the mode. Being too big as a female lizard is bad, and being too litter, the male lizard are like, oh no, I'll break her. So they just like the medium, the regular ones. That's called stabilizing selection. This one you can see is kind of actually going to limit, if this goes on for too long, it could limit our genetic diversity because it's taking out the two ends. So these, if it goes on too long, can be a little dangerous, but only in the event of there being some kind of environmental change. So that's where genetic variation really matters as far as survival of a species. So there's the three. Everybody feel good? Yeah. Great. Here's all three of them again. Remember directional, so this would be like a before and after directional, right? The whole graph looks like it's shifted in one or the other direction. To show you an example, so we've got snails of varying color. Here, these snails were the ones that are selected for, and these snails, they don't see them anymore, or not very much anymore. Stabilizing selection, that would be the two extremes of snails, more green or more brown. up oh, they're gone. They just want the medium snails. That's stabilizing selection. Just take out the ends. And then diversifying selection, a.k.a. disruptive selection, whatever was in the middle, nope, that was crappy. So instead, the two extremes. So you can see here you have varying degrees of staleness, and then the ones on the ends are the ones that matter more. That's it. Those are the three types of selection. So what type of selection do you think the male lizards had? For those who had met, but were able to make it down to the same day. Those who weren't able to make it down to the male lizards, bigger is better. So what kind of selection is that? If bigger is better... What kind of selection is that, Marshall? Direction. That's directional selection, right? The mode is going to shift towards more big lizards. And that's the three main types of selection. Questions?